address here on the cross code. All right, everyone, welcome to the first press conference of game two of the Maui Invitational. We have head coach Shaka Smart with us leading off today's presser. Uh, Shaka will open up with an opening statement about the game. Then we'll take questions from the group. Just as a reminder, please raise your hand virtually and we will mute and unmute you accordingly. So you can go ahead and ask your question for coach. Um, with that, we will get started. Coach, if you can give us your opening statement. Hi, everybody. Good team win. Uh, our, I thought the best part about this game was the way that uh, we had a lot of guys step up and play with a lot of aggressiveness and, and a lot of togetherness, even though we had a ton of foul trouble. Uh, you know, for Greg Brown only to be able to play 12, 13 minutes, Kai Jones only 13 minutes, Jericho was limited uh, in terms of his playing time. For guys like Royce Ham, Brock Cunningham to step up, that's what a team's about. Uh, obviously, we set a tone on the defensive end. We really challenged the guys on that after the Davidson game. I didn't think we played poorly on defense in the Davidson game, but I thought our one-on-one -on -one defense was not good enough, uh, and we did a did a much better job today. Thank you. I'll now open the floor for questions. Yeah, Shaka, um, just more detail about Brock and Royce. You mentioned the foul trouble, but – what was it that allowed those guys to come in and just have a lot of success? I, I know heading into this game, you probably told those front court guys, this is going to be a heck of a challenge. And a lot of those guys had to deal with some fouls, yet Brock and Royce came in and really gave you some steady minutes. Well, probably the biggest area where we need to improve on defense is fouling less. Uh, but at the same time, we need and want to play with a level of aggressiveness. So if that means we foul sometimes – um, that's something that we can work on and get better at, but the aggressiveness has to be there. Um, yeah, absolutely. Our goal was to keep Jackson Davis and Thompson combined under 24 points. They got 21. Um, you know, we knew that they were going to go in there early and often. Those guys both played really well yesterday. Uh, again, Royce Ham, I, I thought, really gave us a huge lift by going to the post. And, you know, we, we talk about in defense dancing in the post, and I thought he did a great job of just having active feet. Uh, Brock Cunningham, I can't wait to watch the hustle plays that he had today, man. I, I just – that's one of my most favorite things to do is just watch those plays um, because they're winning plays and they're completely selfless plays. Shaka, just continuing on, on Brock for a second, where, where do you see him continuing to develop the most? I mean, his stat line today was pretty phenomenal. Uh, where, where do you see his growth through this offseason? Well, it just – he impacts winning. He makes winning plays. He does whatever you need him to play. He can play different positions. He can guard different positions. Um, you know, he's at his best when he's just super aggressive, not really worried about, you know, what might or might not happen, just attacking. Uh, you know, those two threes he made, I've never seen a guy make a three and then, and then chase after the ball so much like it's going to be a miss. But uh, that's his mentality. And the fact that he, he got so many deflections, he had his hands in the basketball, four assists, uh, 11 rebounds is huge. Yeah, Shaka, uh, you know, early in the second half, it kind of looked like Indiana was threatening a little bit. It looked like y'all were, were sort of looking for a spark from somewhere. And Matt really stepped up and he just sort of looked like he was playing under control. He had a little pep in his step. How important was he today, especially with a lot of guys in foul trouble and some other guys, their shots weren't really falling. Yeah, Matt was really big. I mean, I'm really hard on Matt, and I'm, I'm, I'm always on him. I was on him in the first half for about a couple of plays, but he's done a great job of, uh, you know, playing with a level of desperation like you should have as a senior guard and knowing that, you know, these opportunities are few and far between, and, and it's on us to make the most of them. So 
he did a nice job giving us a lift at the start of the half. Uh, a, a huge deflection to go the other way and, and score two points, which is how we want to be and how we want to play. Shaka, what do you think it says about your team's defensive capability that you can crack the whip on them and you, and you have gotten two of the top three defensive games that you've had since you've been here so far? Well, I mean, we're, we, we've got capable guys. Um, you know, I think if we can continue to – if we can improve defending without fouling, we can be even better. But um, I told the guys yesterday – after the game, I, I didn't think we necessarily led with our defense. Now, Davidson deserves a lot of credit for how they scored the ball. But today we led with our defense, and that's, that's what our identity has to be. Hey, hey, Shaka, this is Aaron Beard with the Associated Press. I did want to ask you about uh, Greg Brown, the education of a freshman when you're dealing with a tournament like this, no exhibition games. I mean, he had one sequence where he had a great reverse layup, air ball to three, but then came right down and drew a charge, like in about a 30-second span, it seemed like. Just kind of what's – what's how are you bringing along a freshman with in this current time of, in a tournament like this, trying to build something with them? Well, the first thing is, is him learning all the little things that go into winning. Um, you mentioned the charge. You know, making the plays on the defensive end that he needs to make to, to match the intensity level of all the guys around him. He's learning. He's gotten better uh, on the offensive end. It's, it's still a work in progress from the standpoint of just understanding the reads at this level. I think in high school, he was so good. He could just make his mind up pre, you know, prematurely and say, okay, when I get the ball, I'm going to drive. At this level, you can't necessarily do that. When you drive, you've got to know, okay, they're helping. I got to kick to this guy. I got to get to two feet. So it's not a charge. He's learning. His best basketball is ahead of him. He's a better shooter than he's shooting right now. But that's typical. A freshman just needs to get into a rhythm and step into a shot the right way, and he'll start making more. Great. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. I welcome Matt Coleman and take questions for Matt. Thank you. Yeah. Matt, haven't seen you uh, smiling like that uh, in a while. Just what did you think about – just the flow of the game and how you guys were able to turn the defense into some really solid offensive chances today. Um, I think we just, we owned and we learned from yesterday, Garden Davidson, they're a well coached, well offensively team. And we just wanted to carry over. There was a couple of things that we knew Indiana wanted to do, play through their bigs, uh, high pick and roll, short roll, uh, and then they had a good guard in Al Durham, and we just wanted to just make it tough for, for all of them. And we just carried that over for 40 minutes, and um, the rest took care of itself. Yeah, Matt, I know the Shaka's messages for a while now has been kind of, you know, winning is in the details. Is today an example of that where you guys win by 22? I mean, you shoot under 40%, but you win by 22 because I think you finished – plus 19 and rebounding, you're 15 and 19 from the foul line. Was it really in the details today? Yeah, I mean, I just think we took – we owned, we took it personal uh, of matching the intensity of Anna and just, you know, just being mature. Like, um, they came off a great win yesterday. We came off a win of – Matt, I think there was one sequence late in the, the first half. I think Brock came up with a steal and, and ended up throwing it up to Florida. You pull up and hit a three, I think, put you guys up 11 or 12. Describe his performance and, and also Royce's performance, those guys coming off the bench and giving you some big minutes. Brock's brutal, so you know, we just – it's in our DNA. Uh, but Brock is one of those guys that you love playing with, but you hate playing against. Um He's going to give you extra possessions. Uh, he's going to make open shots, and he's just going to fly around. And that's what we need. That's a guy. He fits perfect into how we want to play. And like I said, you you love playing with him because he's going to help you win. Okay, one last question. Anybody? Anybody? Hey, you there? Hey, real quick about Brock, though. I mean. Can you just talk about the importance of everybody has to play their role? And this is clearly his role. Yeah. And, and he knows that. 
he knows that we'll come in practice. He was like, let's just put me in the corner. I'll be ready to shoot. Uh, I, that's just who he born. That's who he was born to be. He he flies in, gets extra possessions. He's always going to crash the offensive glass. He's going to be a M effort on the defensive end. Uh, so that's just he knows his DNA and he knows his role and he and he does it well at a high level. Good. Thank you, Matt. Yes, sir. All right. Thank you, everyone. I use up next. See ya. Okay, everyone, we have Indiana head coach Arch Miller. Michael Pegram, I'll start with you. Coach, uh, they jumped up the get-go. Didn't seem to have, you know, have it at all today. What was, I mean, was it, uh, was it, was it all phases of the game? Yeah, it really was. Give Texas credit. You know, I think, you know, Texas a little bit stunned our guys in the first four to five minutes of the game. Inability to reverse the ball, inability to connect on a screen, inability to do what we wanted to do. You know, they imposed early on how, physical and how tough they were going to play. And I thought that that, that played a role. It knocked us on our heels. Um, you know, I think defensively, they're all, uh, you know, very good in and around the basket. They have great length and they did a really good job of, of you know, to be honest with you, making things difficult. Um, I'm not going to say every shot that we took was tough because obviously I think, you know, right now we're missing some easy ones in and around the rim. Trace in particular is really going to have to, you know, get something going for us a little bit when we're struggling. We need him to play you know, a little better than he played here, you know, last couple of days, I think just in and around the basket, being able to convert a little better. But, you know, to me, this is a game you're going to have to learn from. And this is why you play in these events with this type of competition, because it speeds you up in terms of learning what you can't have happen. But, you know, for us, 
to give easy baskets, to give up second shots, and to turn it over. It's the only thing we talk about. We did all three in the first half. So nine turnovers, gave them at least 11 in transition, you know, off ones that we can control. And, um, you know, I think the rebounding margin was seven at the half. And, um, you know, you look at the rebound margin at the end of the game, and it may be skewed in the last four to six minutes, but we got beat up on the glass and um, couldn't run offense efficiently in, in transition, um, especially early when we were getting stops. Um, you know, you know, didn't get it done. They beat us in every one of those phases, and at the end of the day, we were dominated sort of in, the, in those little things. You combine the fact that our offense couldn't get anything going, um, you know, to me, over the long course of the game, they wore us down. Hey, Archie, this is Aaron Beard with the Associated Press. Uh, I'm curious, do you worry about confidence when you're trying to get started? You didn't have exhibitions. It was an altered offseason. Does this damage confidence, you think, when you're trying to get the, the formation of a team together, or do you just throw it away and you think these guys move on? This is what you need to do. No, no, you need to see this. I mean, this is, this is the evidence that you need. This is the real time evidence. You don't have scrimmages. You don't have exhibitions. You got three games in three days against a great field. This is going to teach you exactly what you need to do to be more, to more, you know, be, to be better as a player, as a coach, and, and as a team. And our team, you know, I think in general right now learned a, learned a good lesson today. You know, I think we, as well as we played, as hard as we played last night, they played harder today, more physical, and imposed more will on us today. Got to find a way to respond. And I also think this, early in the year, as the season always starts, you're trying to find that rotation and chemistry. And we're not there yet, but we have some guys that just aren't playing as well as they can. And I think once they, you know, step up a little bit more, make some more plays, you know, we'll be better. But today we didn't, we didn't play well, didn't coach well. And um, it's not for lack of our players wanting to or preparing. I mean, it wasn't like we got real high after last night and didn't, you know, work at it. We had a quick turnaround just like Texas, but I thought Texas is, Texas' uh, defense in particular, number one, really frustrated us. And I think number two, over the course of the game, not being able to keep it in reaching distance, you know, eventually broke us. But, you know, we're better than we played today. Hey, Archie, Alex Bozich with Inside the Hall. Any update on Al's status after he went down late in the second half? And also, just from an offensive perspective, I know you mentioned the turnovers and the poor shooting. Um, but was there anything specific uh, in terms of just kind of getting into the offense that, that didn't happen today that, that maybe happened yesterday? Well, uh, regarding Al, you know, he's an ankle injury. I don't know the severity of it right now. Uh, we'll take good care of him in terms of making sure that, you know, we, we get the proper information. But uh, I would say he's doubtful playing tomorrow, just knowing what I know now. He didn't um, – I didn't see him. Uh, until we got into the locker room. But, uh, you know, I would say that he's out for right now. Don't know how serious. Uh, but our offense in general got got taken off its, 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 uh, its rails today. You know, I think yesterday we had a good push. I think yesterday we had good execution. And I think Texas amped up their level today and took things away from us. And for the first time all year, you know, we're having to learn on the fly. Like we got to get this thing under control offensively. We've got to execute better. We have to have better pace. We have to have better movement. And I just think the physicality and the toughness in, in screening actions and the screening on the ball and in the, in the rim running and just the overall pop, we didn't have it today. And, um, you know, I think trace in general, as I'm watching him down here, he doesn't have the pop in his legs in and around the rim. He's logging a lot of minutes and, um, you know, he's going to have to keep playing, but, to me, we got to get Trace going, and that will help us, you know, along the lines. He's a guy that, you know, clearly is, is very important to what we're doing. Yeah, Coach, you kind of touched on it there. I was going to ask what you thought Trace needed to do to get going. He hasn't been efficient offensively these last couple of games. Is it just being more aggressive when he gets the ball in the in the paint? Yeah, yeah, I don't know. we we got to watch it. I mean, he's missing some easy ones. I think he's trying to get fouled rather than just playing and, and scoring. Yeah, he'll figure it out. He'll fix it. I mean, he's a, he's, a, he's a good player. He's dealing with a different role, though. I mean, they're giving him some serious physical bodies right now. Last night in and around the rim was very physical. Tonight, super physical around the basket. I mean, you know, from a personal foul standpoint, Texas fouled 28 times in the game. And, um, you know, he got nine free throws. So, 
he did something right. But it, the easy ones, I think, the, the ones that you got to be able to count on when you're struggling, those are the ones you got to be able to get. But um, um, we'll see. You know, it's not for it's not for his intention or, or not wanting to. I think sometimes maybe he's a little pressing too much and sometimes he's bothered that he does miss a shot here or there. Uh, but Trace has always been a guy when his head and mind and everything is set straight. He'll always come to play when it matters the most. And tomorrow's a big day for him and his leadership. But I just think important for Trace, if you look at his rebound numbers, if you look at his getting to the foul line numbers, if you look at how many times he's out running people or getting hustle rebounds, those are the things that make Trace special. And I just think right now he's not doing enough of those and he's worrying a little bit more about missing shots. And he's got to do the other part too. Yeah, you know, uh, just looking back at the game, it felt like, you know, Brock Cunningham was really everywhere for Texas State. He was on every loose ball. He was battling for boards. I mean, just how valuable is a guy like that for any team, you know, especially for Texas team today. But just to have that glue guy who, who just battles and hustles and, and doesn't really care about putting his body on the line. Yeah, I mean, coming in on film, I mean, it was, he was a big part. He was an X factor in the game. You know, you can't let him make the hustle plays. He had 11 rebounds in 20 minutes, three offensive plays really, really hard defensively, and he's capable you know, offensively of, of spacing the floor for him. So he gives them a guy that I'm sure that Shaka would say they really depend on him. You know, when you're dependable, you know, that's a really, really great asset to have. Archie, your uh, uh, bench guys were just one of 11 shooting today, didn't get much from there. Uh, especially on a day when you're struggling like that, how important is it to get some sort of spark from somebody off the bench? Yeah, I mean, you know, you know, realistically, there's one player coming off the bench right now, which is Jerome, that's played in college. So, you know, for us, our young guys are going to have to get into the rhythm here, sort of get get going a little bit. We need Jerome to play better. Jerome's a much better player than he's played. He's had a hard time getting going down here, and that would really help us, you know, with more minutes on the floor. Uh, where he's played better, and um, we need that from him. You know, clearly, you know, Joey's absence really shows in the lack of depth, you know, in terms of being able to establish continued size and, and a rim presence uh, when things aren't going well. But he's not available, so these other guys got to step up. Our young guys, they're just going to get better from these type of experience right here. We play in this event, got a lot of information on what you're going to need to do to be successful. And, you know, I just think as we keep going here, um, it's going to be really, really imperative to develop our bench and to keep counting on them to give us minutes. You don't want to keep it as a five-man group, six-man group. you got to sprinkle those guys in. Last night, Jordan Geronimo gave us a spark, did a really good job. You know, I think, you know, Trey's obviously uh, giving us some minutes. We need Jerome, we need Christian, we need Anthony, we need all those guys uh, to keep making us deeper. All right, thank you, Coach. Thank you.